everybody. We're back. We mentioned a couple minutes ago it is Hockey Week here on Minnesota Live and Twin Cities Live. And we're spending the next five days celebrating the great state of hockey, ending with the highly anticipated Boys High School Hockey Tournament. Now, there is no better way to start the week than with our next guest. Lou Nanny has spent the last 60 years calling the games at the state tournaments. He moved from Canada to play for the University of Minnesota Gophers in 1960, and the defenseman was one of the most well-known players of that decade. Seven years later, he became an American citizen, and he played for Team USA in the 1968 Winter Olympics alongside Herb Brooks. Lou played more than 600 games with the Minnesota North Stars after playing. He rose in the ranks to the, uh, through the team as a coach, general manager, and president, and we all hear him on KFAN. He's been there for more than 25 years. He's here now to share five facts about himself. Lou, thanks for coming in. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. We had to take uh, 20 minutes just to set you up with all the <laughs> accomplishments that you have yeah, and yeah, how, in the, how in the world we can come up with just five facts is, is a surprise to me. <laughs> but um, you're, it's tournament time. This is an exciting time of year for you, and this is your, your last tournament. That's right. I think that uh, this is appropriate. 60 years is a nice round number, and I, I really enjoyed doing it. Of course, I'm going to miss it, but I'm ready for it to be over. I'm, I'm anticipating, you know, uh, a good tournament. Hopefully, hopefully, it's going to be like all the rest were very exciting, and I'm looking forward to ending it. Yeah, I got to there. Uh, you played for the Gophers. Right. Many, many years ago. And do you still keep in touch with members of the team? Talk a little bit about when well, you played for them. Well, some members of the team, in, yeah. in fact, uh, you know, I'm real close to Bill Ramsey, whose daughter is, and I'm granddaughter and grandson both played in Edina High School this year. One's already won the state tournament, and the other the girls, one's going yeah. for the state tournament. But uh, David Brooks, uh, Lily Holm, uh, some of the guys that I played with are still around. Uh, some have passed, but you know we we have occasions to get together for certain functions and schmaltz power. It's nice to see guys that I played with. Yeah, no doubt. So we're talking about the state tournament. Uh, this is a big time of year around here, and you've, you've called so many. It, uh, we would hardly think we could just pick some out, but there are three that really stand out in particular for you, and why is that? Well, actually, when, when you're calling the tournament, everybody thinks you, you want one team to win and another team to win. You really don't have time for that, and I, I literally really don't care, except when my family's playing. And I, if you don't think I'm not going to be looking for my family to win, <laughs> you're crazy. So the three, my son, uh, Marty, had the good fortune of winning a championship, scoring a winning goal in the championship game. And his two sons, Louie and Tyler, both played in uh, won championships. So those three games were games that, that I really treasure and cherish. I, I've had the good fortune of broadcasting Hockey Night in Canada, Stanley Cup, the CBS, the Stanley Cup in the U uh, U.S., uh, the Olympics, uh, ESPN, I was their first broadcaster on the college broadcast. Wow. I've done all those things, but by far and away, the toughest games I ever had to broadcast were my family because, yeah. and now I got Vinny Letary and I did a wild game. He got called up and scored a goal. I, I, I have to tell you, you, you have to watch, first of all, to keep it neutral and yeah, be yeah. professional. Mm -hmm. Secondly, to not get caught up on what the kid's doing because now it takes away your concentration by about the game and what you should be reporting. So that was really tough, and I'm glad that they're over when I'm broadcasting them. Okay. Family clearly very, very important to you. Right. And we talked in the intro about all of your accolades over the years, but talk to us a little bit about your family. You've been married for 60-plus years. Yeah, it'll be 62 in August, and we had four children, uh, a girl, Michelle, and twin boys, Mike and uh, Mark, and Mike passed away 12 years ago with a brain tumor, mm -hmm. and Marty's our youngest, and we have 11 grandchildren. And uh, this July, we're expecting our 10th great-grandchild. Great oh, my goodness. So uh, people were saying, were you going to stay and broadcast for that? I, I looked at it, it says 12 more years to be in the state tournament to broadcast one of my grandson's yeah. games. And <laughs> I said, maybe I'll just make a guest appearance if he makes it. There you <laughs> go. Think, think you put go. in your time at this yeah. point, right? Yeah. Uh, well, you've talked a lot about how important family is to you, and it sounds like you guys have a really nice setup, a nice cabin setup, where pretty much the whole crew can, can come and gather. Tell us about that. Well, we are fortunate to have a place in Balsam Lake. We've been on there 27 years, and that's a, a cabin there. It's a uh, place where everybody can come and gather. We have enough other rooms, cabins on there so our whole family can be there. And we like to get everybody together at least three days a year, Memorial Day, July 4th, Labor Day, and 
after that, whoever wants to come during the week comes, and it's there for them whenever they want to be there. And it's just something that my parents did when we were growing up, and uh, we were only nine miles out of the Sioux. I used to hate it because I wanted to be in town playing ball, but I had to be there on the weekends, and I could go in and play ball and come back. And, and it's something I didn't think I'd ever get to, but now I find it's a great way to keep the family together, keep them close, and mm -hmm. which to us is the most important thing, and that's why we enjoy it. And is most of your family kind of Twin Cities based so that they're able to kind of make that trip? All of them. They, all of them. That's, That's fantastic. That's so good. They're all within yeah. 20 minutes, which oh, is very unusual. When, it is. You know, we're 38 right now and uh, members, and we have another wedding this summer, and, and uh, it just keeps growing. Unfortunately, they're all in town. Yeah, you're lucky. <laughs> how, how many people in, in your family are some way connected to hockey? I kind of feel like you're the godfather of hockey. And well, my uh, my son Marty played. He was drafted by Chicago. He played pro. His two sons, uh, Louis and Tyler, were both drafted. Louis by Wild, Tyler by New York. And uh, Louis didn't play pro after college. He went right to work. And Tyler did. He signed in the Washington organization. And my daughter's and Tino Terry's uh, son Vinny, he uh, he plays with the Wild. So. Those three uh, boys were the ones that continued playing professionally and are in college and, and professional hockey afterwards. Lou, do they take advice from you? Do the grandsons go, it's okay, better. my grandpa's the great, do they, do they listen to your <laughs> advice or are they like, we got this? Well, they uh, maybe first say we got this, but no, <laughs> actually I, I don't try and give them too much advice, but yeah. when I do, they listen. Nice. And I, I, I like to stay out of it. The one thing you have to be very careful about now it's just Vinny, and, and I, I don't want to get involved in Vinny's game because I might be telling them something that the opposite was coaches tell them. Yeah. So, you know, you're playing for the coach, and you better play his style, not what I want you to do. But if there's some things that I think even a coach would agree that he should be doing better, then I might point that out. Tell us about your travel. You guys really like traveling. This is something that's been very important. Yeah, we've been very fortunate. My wife and I have traveled all over the world. <laughs> we really enjoy it and uh, we've been fortunate enough even through hockey. I've, I've played all over the, you know, all over Europe and Russia and, and uh, all of Scandinavian countries, etc. And, and running teams afterwards. So we've had that good fortune. Now we just, uh, we prefer to go to Italy, but we love Europe a lot. We don't go to the Far East anymore. We don't go to well, we might go back to New, uh, in, uh, New Zealand and Australia. That was great. But usually it's just we enjoy going to Europe. And we've basically been to every place we want to go. So now we just prefer, like, the Malfi Coast. Well, it's so beautiful. beautiful. Oh, you were there not that long ago, right? Cinque Terre, so a little bit. That's, that's gotcha. north. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Cinque Terre is great. Different. Right below there is Fort de Marmi, which is also terrific. And and we were there last year, but uh, there, anywhere you go, you never get a bad meal or a bad bottle of wine. So Very it's, true. it's tough not to like, and the people are great, and the travel is easy around the country, so it's terrific. What are you, what are you looking forward to most with the tournament, knowing that this is going to be your final year of it? I think the fact that you only got two teams that really are uh, won their division, Edina and, uh, and uh, Chan Hassan didn't win it. Uh, you only have two of them, so... I'm looking forward to every year there seems to be an upset. You never know where mm -hmm. it's going to be or who it's going to be. You got White Bear that hasn't got by the first round for a long time. They're a good team. Grand Rapids, you know, came back from a couple of goals down, one in overtime. There's uh, there's so many stories there that uh, you never know which one's going to come through. And you got Rochester, John Marshall, Century upsetting Lakeville. I mean, I, I, I always just look for the things, the unexpected, because there always is something unexpected that happens. That's what makes it fun, right? That's what, that's what it is. You got a one-game tournament. That's why we had the miracle on ice. You know, we, one game anybody can win. And so that's what, what keeps you interested. You ever get tired of the game? You ever get tired of watching it, of hearing about it, of talking about it? You've Not been all aspects. I, I, I get tired of talking about it. Do you? But I don't get tired of watching it. I really enjoy watching it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I, I just said, I'm, I'm tired of hearing myself talk. <laughs> but, tired of hearing but, myself we talk. Love no, no, but I, <laughs> but, but I really still enjoy watching it. I, yeah. And it doesn't matter what games I'm watching, whether Pee Wees or high school or college or pro, every game is different and unique and unusual, and, and there's something that you appreciate in it. 
Well, the fact that you, I mean, you know the teams that are playing. It, it takes homework to be able to yeah. make the call. You've got to have some background on these. So, I mean, it is a lot of work. I don't know that everybody quite appreciates that. Well, it is. That's why during the year I, I, I followed even from afar, try to know who's winning, who's good, who to expect might be in the tournament, then who gets there, who's good players, how they play, and talking to the coaches and, and uh, reading all the information that you get. you, you got to prepare for it because you want to talk about something that the people might be interested in hearing about. Well, Lou, thanks for You're your time today. Thank you. For 60 years. My pleasure. Nice yeah. to be with you guys. Can't wait. You. Looking forward to hearing you make the call. Thank you. One last time. So, uh, by the way, we did not mention, uh, but uh, you, I've been here many times. You, Lou also has a restaurant in town at Cedina. That is Tavern 23. And you can hear him announcing during the incoming high, upcoming high school hockey games on 45 TV. Coverage starts for you 11 o'clock on Wednesday.